Hey, so today I wanted to teach you how to create an original character based on the things I learned in art school. If you don't know me, I am a recent game art graduate and I've studied game art for about four years. We didn't learn much, but this way of creating an original character is something actually useful we learned there. So let me show you how I made this character. This was a school project and so we had to build a character out of a certain theme and my theme was Chrono Maze. Of course, the first thing you're gonna do is research. I brainstormed three different aspects and that's the mood, the backstory and the look. The first thing I thought of when hearing Chrono Maze was the word chromatic. So I scrolled through Pinterest and I made a mood board of that specific vibe. What kind of vibe are you getting from this? futuristic and that's gonna help me write the backstory to give the character a purpose and not just make a random character i came up with a backstory it helps with world building but it also helps with giving the character some personality and a reason as to why they're doing certain things or they look a certain way so this backstory is gonna help me create a look okay so we're thinking futuristic creative and I've also decided to make the character a girl because girls are way more fun to draw. With those keywords in mind, I collected a bunch of new pins, I made a new mood board, and that will be a very handy reference sheet for when I start sketching the outfits. But before I start working on those details, we gotta start with the basics. My teacher showed me this new way of creating characters and that's with the help of silhouettes. This way of sketching works really well for me because I tend to get lost in the details very easily and this forces me to focus on the big picture first. I ended up with these nine sketches. Which one would you pick? Me and the teacher went for this one since that's the most mysterious one, which goes really well with the backstory we made earlier. After improving the silhouette wet sketch a little bit, it's time to use that outfit mood board and create outfit sketches. The silhouette shows this really poofy and oversized top half and then a small slim bottom half. So in the sketches I tried various options like hoodies, sweaters and jackets. To stay in a futuristic theme, I tried to add as many little details as possible so it looks more like a high-tech outfit instead of a boring stay-at-home outfit. I used Instagram polls for feedback and the thing I learned was that my sketches were too similar. To get a better view of what works best, it's important to make your sketches as diverse as possible. But I picked out certain aspects of the three most popular sketches and I created a final look. Then it's time to make some color sketches. The chrome mood board shows either a lot of silver and metallic or lots of pinks and purples, so I made sure to experiment with both. I put together this color palette and I made these four color sketches. I once again used Instagram to ask for opinions and these two are basically tied. But once again, keeping in mind the backstory and that she very much loves living in the background, I chose this purple jacket instead of this shiny reflective silver jacket. I made some tweaks to the final color palette and I finished it off with some basic shading, mostly to show off that the purple jacket jacket is made of like this reflective material to stay close to the chromatic mood board. If I were to redo this character, I would definitely make the jacket more colorful, add some pinks and some blues in there to really give that chromatic vibe. One of the best reference points you can make for your character is a character turnaround, and here's how I made mine. The easiest thing to start with is the front. Draw that, then take the most important points and draw horizontal lines from those points. Like of course the top of her head and the bottom of her shoes, but also for example the top and bottom of her jacket, the knee pads, and the top of her shoes. All of these lines will help you make the side and back view as accurate as possible. It's easier to draw the back before drawing the side because you can just copy and paste the front view, keep the silhouette but erase all the details, and then just fill in the back details. Then after that, you can draw the side view while constantly referencing the front and back. I didn't shade the turnaround, mostly because I didn't have enough time in school, but the turnaround can also be a good reference point for the color palette, so it's better to keep the colors flat. And here's the final character. After half a year of being nameless, I finally gave her a name and that's Aiko. At first I shrugged it off as just a school project, but last July I added her to my character sheet for art fights, and I realized that she's actually a really cool character. But talking about school projects. If you're curious to see all the illustrations I made in those four years in art school, check out this video. Don't forget to subscribe and let me know in the comments if you have any original characters. I would love to see them. And then I'll see you in the next video. Bye!